Okay, guys. We're going to see if we can focus in on this. Okay, YouTube. We are in the tent. And we are about to light the fire in the TMS 45 wood burning stove that I have put inside the tent. One thing that I've done recently, and I'm just going to adjust a couple of openings here. There we go. One of the things I did was I put some of this expansion metal down inside. And today I decided that I always struggle with being able to reach in there and get this fire lit. Today I'm just going to use a couple of cotton balls and some cedar bark that I picked up when I was out in uh, Kansas. So what I did was I trimmed this down about an inch and a half on either side so that I could pull this out. Now I can set up a couple of cotton balls. I'll just go ahead and tear them apart for plenty of surface area here. And I can put them in like such. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this cedar bark kind of right up over the top. Some of that is still stringy. Some of it I broke down into into real fine fibers which you can see right here like this super fine dust coming off of that the other day when I was making my uh, mallets and such I have all these little small pieces of oak here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lace those around the top I do have a couple of actually a couple of small pieces of fat wood that I wanted to, to just lay down in here in the cotton and that's just a beautiful piece knotty piece of fat wood right here that i just wanted to lay in and i'll put that underneath of that bundle then i just thought i'd take a few of these pieces varying sizes and such and now i can kind of create a nice lay fire lay with some variable sized pieces kind of up and over lay them on the sides I want this fire to I can make a little TP type thing here I don't want to smother the fire I definitely want it to be able to take off but then I should be able to feed more <coughs> of this real fine broken down pieces of, of oak that's in here and hopefully get a decent fire bed started. Stay with me, I'm going to grab a longer handled lighter since we're just cheating in the backyard today. Okay guys, I found my lighter. Just wanted to swing that around so you could see that a little bit. Got a nice little TP set up. Now we'll just reach in. Get our... Hopefully our lighter will light up. We should be able to get these cotton balls started. Pretty much straight away. And now I can slide that back in there. Let's see if we can get the camera around so that you can see back inside all right guys okay now you can see that fire starting to take off that's in the inside close this Open the flue on the front. Now we should start to be able to get a little bit of an updraft moving towards the back. That way we can get the fire to, to go in the other direction. You can see that back inside. This was a great idea. 
I thought, being able to now take this, and I can slide this back and forth. If I see fire coming along, I can add a few more pieces of wood in here. Carefully slide that towards the back. Now I can control the smoke and the draft with that. Now I've got it centered back a little bit further. Seems to be taking off and doing pretty good in there. All right, as you can see through the vent holes there, we got a nice little fire going. Got a hot water pot sitting up on top here. Hopefully we'll be able to make a couple of quarts of hot water here. My objective is to have a nice hot, hot cup of tea here in a little bit. Get this set directly up over the top here. Back by the flue. I don't think it's quite hot enough yet to to boil that water by any means. But our objective here is simply to make it nice and warm. So I think overall, we're looking pretty darn good here. I did open the windows and vent some of the smoke out of the tent because we always get a little backlash when we first start up. So something to bear in mind when you guys are out there hot tenting. Get yourself plenty of air moving through the tent when you first fire it up. That way it'll it'll grab that air and it'll go up the flue instead of coming back out inside the tent. So it's a beautiful fire. We'll keep it stoked. I'm hoping it snows one to seven inches tonight. I'm gonna test the tent, see if it'll stand. See how the roof does with a snow load on it. So anyway, We'll check back after a bit. We'll see if the water gets hot. We'll let you know how things are going. Okay, guys. Across opposite the wood-burning stove, I have my cot set up. A couple of pillows. Nice little lamp. I've got a chair. I uh, got a water brick. Got this from CampingSurvival.com. It was about $17, holds three and a half gallons of water. So I filled it up about three quarters of the way. Got a little coffee pot, got my billy pot in case I wanna make up some soup later on. Got another chair over in the corner, got my wood box. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got this window about half open. You can kind of see where the shade, the outside cover comes down about halfway. So had to do that to get a little ventilation in here. The fire, as you can see, still coming along nicely. You can see it through the vent holes. I did notice up where the flue goes through, that corner of the tent's heating up nicely. And when I was outside earlier with a flashlight checking it, I could see the steam coming off of the tent as it's drying out the material as it sat out here in the rain. I've got one of the flaps for the for the door um, open so that we get plenty of ventilation in here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to try to get the camera to focus on this. That's going to be a toughie. But it's already about 72 degrees in here. So I think I'm going to have a pleasant evening out in the tent. It's very nice in here. I'm all already warm. Looking forward to sleeping on my cot. I do have that window completely closed. Um, just because that's the side that I'm sleeping on. But anyway guys, we'll, uh, we'll be back after a while. We'll see if the water heats up on top of the stove there. And uh, the smoke's cleared out. It's right comfortable in here now. Okay guys, just a quick note on hot tent safety in a canvas tent. Uh, as I don't have a cutout in the floor, what I've done is I've put a tin oil drip pan underneath of my wood burning stove. And then underneath of that, I actually have a uh, welder's blanket, which is supposed to be good up to a thousand degrees. That way it can catch sparks and such from when you're welding. So hopefully nothing, anything, or rather hopefully 
anything that comes out of that fire won't have any kind of an issue with the tent itself. So always try to hedge the bet in your favor. But I think between that tin pan and the welder's blanket, I think we're in pretty good shape. Just in case you guys are curious about how we have this set up for safety. Well, fellas, as I've mentioned earlier, I am a fan of tea when I am out camping. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of tea. I always keep tea in these peanut butter jars here and just good old fashioned Lipton's tea. I've discovered that the water pot is plenty hot. That's been sitting on top of the stove. In fact, I'm wondering if you can see the steam coming off of that. So I'm gonna put that up just to right about there. Oh, that is gonna be lovely. I will caution this. Anytime you put a pot on your wood burning stove make sure you pick it up with gloves lest you burn yourself okay so now we've got that sitting in there it's going to steam up nicely I've closed the lid to keep the heat in and again you know I just put Lipton tea in good old fashioned peanut butter jars sugar guys should always have some sugar on board if nothing else survival situation it's just a good source of energy uh, calories going to be involved in it as well but definitely some a source of energy um, I have my and I've called this a titanium spork a couple times but it's actually um, aircraft aluminum and again it's just a super lightweight thing and today since I'm not driving I don't have to worry about anything I think I might be putting just a touch of this captain's white rum I find that makes a I find that makes a nice cup of tea especially when you're just hanging out in your tent you're relaxing the day's work is done the firewood split the fires going nicely in there I put a couple of bigger logs in it um, I closed the flues down just a little bit so that it wouldn't be just a raging inferno in there, plus conserve my wood a little bit. Um, according to my temperature gauge up here, we are up to 78 degrees. So, all in all, it's very comfortable. I've closed the door. Um, I'm not, Actually, I mean, I just zipped the screen portion shut. I just... The outer canvas layers, they're just laying over there. They're not tied off. They're not zip shut or anything. That way I get good airflow through here. I still have that window over there by the wood burning stove open about, eh, somewhere between a quarter and a third of the way. I may lower that down as the night goes on and the temperature drops a little bit. But again, you have to have that fresh air coming in in order to feed the fire. You don't want to suffocate yourself. Um, I know canvas is not, you know, an airtight material, but there would be no reason to have to compete between breathing and feeding the fire. So always give yourself an avenue from which to bring in oxygen. So let's see how the tea is doing. It smells good. Always take the bag and just crush it up against the side. Boy, can you see the steam coming out of that cup? Man, that water got nice and hot on top of that <clears throat> wood-burning stove. A couple extra dunks here. Good wrap around. Squeeze the goodness out of there. In this case, I'm going to squeeze the heck out of it. I think I'll throw my bag over by the fire on that tin. And then I'll just chuck it into the fire to get rid of it. Probably make it smell pretty good outside. I'll dazzle or drazzle in a little bit of sugar here. Just a wee bit. This is for medicinal purposes.
That'll keep your toes warm when you're in your sleeping bag. And that is, as everybody knows, very important. Give her a good stir. Then we'll cap the old girl off. Let's give her a test, see how it turned out. Hmm. Well, that is, that is nigh on perfect, sports fans. Hmm. Well, it cooled off just the right amount so that you can, well, you can't guzzle it, but you can at least sip it without burning your mouth. Hmm. Wow, it's still hot. Okay, so that's a nice cup of tea in the tent with the wood-burning stove going. Uh, I haven't heard any rain in a while, but um, again, hopefully, you know, they keep talking about one to seven inches of snow. Now they're starting to talk like it's going to just be rain. Either way, I'm set. It's warm. It's comfortable. I'm in shirt sleeve. All right, guys. It's about 7.30 now. Had the stove going for, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours or so. I just put some new logs in it. You can see it through the gap in the top of the, the door there. You can see it shining through those three, the three vent holes in the front. According to my thermometer, it is now a cozy 84 degrees in here. In fact, I've got the door open partially just because it's so hot in here. Unreal. Very, very efficient way to go camping. Got that. Got my bed all set up. Just had my dogs out. My wife came and visited me. Yep. Thing full of water. Got some rum. Got my cup ready for another cup of tea. Oh, it's just, just fantastic, kids. Absolutely fantastic. This is a 10 by 14 tent, and it's just the perfect size. All right, I'll be back. Morning, everyone. Did turn out we were getting some snow. Isn't that beautiful? I would have to say, judging by my table here, that we've got, oh, I don't know, inch, inch and a half of snow. That was all preceded by, um, and still some ice and rain and sleet. It's 34 degrees, it's snowing. Got up this morning, fire was out obviously. I wasn't up every two hours stoking it. Had a pretty good snow load on top of the tent. You can see where I've knocked it down and around the edges there. Zoom in a little bit, see if we can see that. But overall, she withstood that pretty nice. Now, it's not the best design for shedding snow because of the way the roof kind of slopes down and then back up to those bottom supports. But I got up, I knocked it all off. You could tell it just took a lot of weight off of that. But uh, I've started the fire up again. Went inside. My wife had coffee made, which was good, so I went ahead and grabbed a cup of coffee. I got the fire stoked back up and we're going to go up there and see if we can keep it warm enough in there to melt the snow as it's coming down on the tent. This is going to be interesting. Morning guys. Um, just a couple of thoughts. It's the next morning. It's 34 degrees outside. You saw the snow that was on the tent. Um, the load that it was carrying seemed to be doing pretty good. I've come in, I've knocked all the snow off of the roof and the sides. You can hear the popcorn sound in the background. Um, we're getting a combination of big, heavy, wet snow along with some fairly good sized raindrops mixed in with it. Uh, again, it's 34 degrees outside. Got the stove fired back up. We're already approaching about 65 degrees inside the tent. Quite comfortable in shirt sleeve here. 
Um, it's kind of a long night. Obviously, your fire dies out at night unless you, you know, have a watch program or, you know, if there's more than one of you and you can take turns feeding it. My military modular sleep system with just the intermediate bag worked beautifully. Um, <clears throat> kept me toasty warm. I didn't even notice that the, uh, that the fire had died down. So when I got up this morning, it was down, downright chilly. It was, you know, 34 degrees inside, probably maybe 40 degrees inside the tent with me in it. But, um, you know, a couple of thoughts on the design. The design is great. It's roomy. Um, we bought this on Craigslist quite a, well, about two years ago now. Put the stove jack in it. We've been camping in it a lot. This is the first time it's seen ice and snow accumulations. Um, on, on the tent itself while camping. The design's not too bad except for right here where it kind of ski slopes and goes up to where these other, the external ridge poles on the outside are. That tends to accumulate a lot of, you know, water, ice, snow. Um, you have to be especially careful when you're knocking that part off. So far where I've touched the canvas on the inside, I'm not suffering any drip throughs. Um, I think this spring I'll probably uh, set it up on a, when it's supposed to be dry for a few days. I'll, I'll waterproof it again because I don't know if it's ever had that done or not. But overall, you know, the tent did very, very well while under these conditions. Alright kids, now we're going to cook us up a little bacon for breakfast and a couple of eggs. We're going to see if we can get that to work right over top of the old wood burning stove here. I might have should have cut those down a little bit, but either way it's all going to go down in the same direction and in the same place. So hopefully this will get warm enough here. I'll let the fire kind of go down a little bit. So we'll see what happens here in a bit. Another thing that everybody just needs to know and I'll spin this over. But in this particular tent, there's only one entry and exit door, and that's on the, this front side of the tent behind me. So everybody inside the tent has to have a knife on them, basically at all times. This is my Mora. Love this particular knife. But everybody has to have one because with a wood-burning stove inside, and especially with cooking some bacon and you've got some grease, if you've got a fire, then you have to have and the front door is blocked. You have to have a way to get out of the tent. And when it comes right down to it, you take your knife, you cut, your, your, you cut a hole, and you get the heck out of the tent. Anyway, always be cognizant of the safety factors when you're out here and you're doing these things, um, you know, and you're cooking and various other things. Most modern-day tents now um, in a cabin style similar to this would have a front and a rear door, and they're incorporating that as a safety factor. That way, if there is a fire, then you do have the ability to you know, go out one exit or the other. In this case, it's a knife up through the wall of the tent and out you go. Anyway, just wanted to throw that in there, guys. Alright, kids, it's been a few minutes. Don't know if you can see that, but it's starting to heat up, starting to bubble. Won't be too long. We should have bacon. And then once I pull the bacon out, I'll put it into the, the lid portion of that particular military cook set and then I'll fry the the eggs right in the bacon grease should be a good good breakfast stay with me all right kids we're down to our last couple of pieces of bacon that are frying in the pan here looking real good tends to like to cook on the one side because the, the bottom of the pan is bent a little bit so I've just got the last few pieces frying up in there, looking pretty good. Uh, I took the lid and I put the uh, cooked pieces on the lid and I'm just going to keep them over there, keep them nice and warm until we get the eggs done and then we'll be ready to eat. Okay, we got the bacon done. Now let's see if we can get an egg in here. Get that 
hot part over the fire there. Now we're probably just going to scramble these up since there is some bacon crust on the bottom of that other pan. So we'll just take our spork and we'll just scramble them right here in the pan. They're scrambling along here nicely. Get them moved around. Oh yeah. Cooked right in some bacon grease. This can be a basic pioneer breakfast right here, sports fans. Caution. Handles hot. We have scrambled eggs. We have bacon. I don't have as much bacon as I started with because, well, frankly, I've been eating it. And it has turned out very very good I did cut it into smaller pieces which allowed it to cook a little bit quicker oh man the handle on this is pretty warm but obviously you can hold it with your bare hand of course I had it setting off the side of the stove <clears throat> have a nice brew up the tea Kids, I gotta tell you, scrambled eggs made in the bacon grease. Mm. Oh, fellas, that's good. Ladies, you should get out and try this too. Holy cow! I'll have to do a little pot cleaning, pan cleaning. But that's okay. I have to tell you though. Now that's a hearty breakfast. Man, a lot. Probably shouldn't make you guys watch me eat all of this, but at the moment, I don't seem to be able to stand up to turn off the camera. Because I can't wait to put another spork in. Well, kids, I'm going to finish off my breakfast. Yes. But anyway, kids, thanks for playing along. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you out in the woods.